Do men in general want marriage? Yeah, men do want marriage. Men are drawn towards some, um, a lady that is youthful and more fertile. Mm. And we need to stop condemning men because there's a better survival rate of having a child. Have you heard of hypergamy? Men have to do whatever they can to elevate their status. A lot of men haven't done the maths of what it actually takes to look after oneself and look after your family. Like, it is going to be survival of the fittest. The women's both for being picky and not looking at the shorter guys or the guys who maybe do not own 100k. Are they to be blamed? Misconception of what masculine and feminine is. It's not man or woman, it's energy. Are there any practical examples? So if you're a masculine woman, we need to stop treading on each other's toes. The evocative gym, uh, you, you know, the society with women's crazy. Beauty industry, it doesn't help prolong a woman's feeling of being youthful, but really then she just missed out a peak time for her to really meet someone. What do we do about enhancing our online profile? Like, how about get off it? We have the opportunity to meet someone as soon as we leave our house. Do you think it's a brilliant game? I believe you can have chemistry with anyone. Like, anyone. 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 But... Johnny Kessel, welcome to Figure Me Out. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for asking. So I'm super curious to speak to you. Mm. Just for context, the last time we had a podcast on relationships, dating, we had a female matchmaker who was on from Cupid in the city. Cool. And it got a lot of traction. And I realized that it is a big theme and everyone could probably relate to it. Whether you're dating, in a relationship, married, divorce, there's something in there for everyone. And I wanted to bring you on to have the new perspective. <laughs> and if I may, the analogy for me would be, I'd love to be sort of a fly on the wall and get an insight into like the male brain. Yeah. They're really keen to have a perspective. Maybe to start with, give us an introduction by yourself. Okay, well, I've been working in this space for 16 years now. Um, I'm pretty much seen as like an architect and a strategist for people's romantic and social lives. So doesn't matter what sort of goal you want within that area, I'll make it happen for you. So if it's a mindset issue, if it's your social technique, the way you speak to people, your ability to read social situations, it might be that you're just not in the right place in regards to your status, right? So making sure your, your whole social life is set up exactly how it needs to be so you can start reaping those long-term rewards. And do you work with both male and female clients? I do. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 funny. I, I don't market towards women. Mm-hmm. Um, I market towards men. I occasionally get an email from some smart ass girl, a woman that thinks okay. <laughs> that she's that she's the exclusive one that's come in for uh, to to get help with me because I've worked with so many men, right? So it's a smart move. And um, yes, yeah, so I do. I do. I do work with women. I just work with one today, actually. Okay, can we can we delve into your stats? I asked the same question to the female match we had on. Can we delve into your stats? What's the age group of the people you work with, and more precisely, men? What's like? Um, what's what's the age dynamics like? It's different from men and women, where it becomes more of a concern. I think there's more uncertainty for a guy in his mid twenties, right? Um, trying to work a lot of things out, trying to hustle to get the attention from a woman when she's just naturally drawn towards someone of higher status. So typically a guy that's sort of come into his 30s, late 30s, more established, more wise, you know, in in his kind of peak. I was given the energy of when we were back at school, I went to originally a mixed school when I went into an old boys school, maybe we'll get into that later. But, um, you know, trying to sort of innocently grab the attention of, of girls in the playground, you know, not really knowing what it meant you realize they were drawn towards the year above. Mm-hmm. It was just the year above, do you know? It was, it was, and it was just, you don't really think too much of it, but it's the same thing when it comes to a man seeking the attention of a woman whilst he's in his 20s from a woman, woman in her peak in her 20s, but really she's drawn towards a more resourceful man. And I always kind of think back onto that early mm. childhood thing. You know, the times don't really change as the playground does. Okay, we'll get into that. That was an interesting one. We'll yeah. definitely get into but with, it. For women, as you can imagine, it's more of the sort of the times that bring us towards urgency. Late 30s, early 40s. It's a heavy conversation as to why, you know? Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of hard truths as, as to why that is. And I think there's a bigger conversation to have around beauty industry. 
how certain things can prolong a woman's feeling of being youthful, but really then she just missed out on a, 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 a peak time for her to really meet someone. Is there a peak time? I feel so, yeah. And what would that be? I feel that a woman in, uh, you know, evolutionarily speaking, always looking from that standpoint, okay? Men are drawn towards someone who, uh, a lady that is youthful and more fertile. Mm-hmm. And what age bracket is that going to be? You know, it's going to be mid-20s to 30s, right? That's what we know. We know that to be the truth. Mm-hmm. And we need to stop condemning men for either us to grow up, stop going for the younger women, which evolutionary is programmed in us to go for that. Mm-hmm. Because there's a better survival rate of having a child if we if we go for a woman at, at that age. It is unfair, but it is a scientific and biological reality. A man can be 40, 45, 50, can still think about having a family with a younger woman. If you really reverse that, it wouldn't be the same for a woman aspiring to have a family, maybe in a woman in her late 40s, early 50s, right? Right. Have you heard of hypergamy? I think. I was listening to podcasts. Um, I think it was Chris Williamson. He was he used to be on Love Island. I think he has a podcast now. And he was talking about it. And then he mentioned the term hypergamy. And he specifically talked about female hypergamy. And then he said that women generally tend to be attracted to men of have the propensity to go for men who are of a higher socioeconomic background, better status, higher status, more educated, higher income earners. For men, it's a bit different, but also given the supply, if we think about all the education stats, I mean, we've talked about this on, on the last podcast, but if we think about the educational stats, there are more educated women today. And by that definition, there's a, there's a bigger supply of whatever you want to call it, great women out there. And then he said, and this is from him, not me. Yeah. And then he said that men have this big pool of women to choose from. The high caliber, and I say high caliber between brackets, the high caliber men are perhaps of a smaller number. So they are not in a rush. Women are more in a rush given the biological clock and everything. Well, he said men can afford, not, ev- not everyone, let's be clear, but some men can afford to use and discard women. Then the woman goes, well, I feel used, I resent all men, all men are the same. And then the men at the lower socioeconomic ladder, at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder, go, well, we haven't used you, we haven't disregarded you, but we haven't even had the chance to be seen by you because we either are shorter or we have we are from a lower income and all of that. So he basically was trying to summarize this as one of the problems of dating today. Does that echo with you? But it's always been like that. It's always been like that. Yeah. It does. Yeah, I mean, it's um, men have to do whatever they can to elevate their status. No. You know, it, and there's many ways to elevate your status. It's important for men to attain whatever skills they need to attain to progress through the hierarchy of the, their career. They need to work on being as resourceful as possible makes me laugh sometimes when you get clients that maybe they have price objections of, of coaching fees. Aww. And, um, you know, you have to put things in perspective. Like, what are you thinking? Like, a mill is £200. You know, a mill is £200. A pair of shoes is £400 for your girl. Like, how much is price of vacation? Like, you've got to work on being more resourceful. A lot of men haven't done the maths of what it actually takes to look after oneself Look after another and look after your family. So, I don't know, it's just stop soaking about it, get on with it. Get on with it. Like, it is going to be survival of the fittest. That is the world we live in. And what about the women, though? Would you say we are being picky? And I say we as a general term. And it's perhaps the women's fault for being picky and not looking at the shorter guys or the guys who maybe do not own 100k. Are they to be blamed? No, the guy should be earning more than that. I mean, obviously, it's subjective to your society, mm-hmm. right? Like, what ultimately, what does a woman want? She wants to feel safe. She wants to feel secure. So you have to have a good level of resource coming in to, to protect your union, your family. You know, live up to the lifestyle that you want. You know, that what, what we've seen in society is a huge push on empowering women 
which I think is great. A but sense of but. Not 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 using the word but. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm using the word what you need to be conscious of, as if whilst you're empowered, what have you taken on to be empowered? Well, possibly masculine traits mm -hmm. who succeed in the work environment. If you go home and you keep those masculine traits, then the polarity is going to be off between mm -hmm. you and your partner. I think there's some misconception of what masculine and feminine is. It's not man and woman, it's energy. So we both have it, men and women. You have masculine energy, you have feminine energy. So if you go home and you're taking that energy into, into your relationship, then the polarity is going to be off. So we need to work, women, I feel that in this day and age, need to work on how they can get back in touch with their femininity because there's been such a progressive movement of empowerment. Yeah. They've not taken that away. It's not the conversation here. It's what do we need to be mindful of? What's happened? And that's why I'm really celebrating the people that are, um, we've seen a big influx of femininity coaches mm -hmm. and their woo woo workshops and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great to take the piss out of that. I'm the first one to do it, mm -hmm. you know, but I've got a lot of friends in that space. I, I went to one on the weekend. Where did you think of it? It was great. Mm -hmm. It was great. Of course, I went, I went there uh, with my ignorance, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, I, I'm ready to take the piss straight away, you know, but I, I bite my tongue, but it's all valuable. It's all valuable. Like it's, it's a reminder of things that we we need to let go of. We need to let go of our bitterness. We need to forgive quickly. We need to remind ourselves what is masculine energy and what is feminine energy. And if you carry, if a man, if you carry around a lot of feminine energy, then a woman's not going to be attracted towards that. You know, so you got to get, you've got to get back in touch with what are masculine traits and how do we from that? Can you, do you have any subtle examples to? Because I know we talk a lot about feminine and masculine energy. I think sometimes it sounds a bit generic for people thinking about the dating relationship more seriously. Are there any practical examples of how do you identify I'm, I have a bit too much of my masculine energy or I need to bring down my feminine energy for men in this case? So if you're a masculine woman, right, you've become quite independent. You've learned to take care of things for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's reminding to give space for the man to allow him to feel like he's taking care of his partner, okay? Mm -hmm. And by being in autopilot all the time, because that's all you've known, right? We're subtly emasculating the man, and he's then feeling a bit inadequate and frustrated because there's areas that he wants to show that he cares for you, but you're so quick to already cover those tracks. So that would be one. It could be a simple thing like, Take and lead when you're at the restaurant and ordering the food. You know, this is this is maybe again you're just so used to going out of your friends and and doing that, and you know, you don't realize that oh, this is a space right here where he can feel he can step into the masculine and be the man and lead in in this dynamic here. Yeah, you know, planning like planning the holiday. You guys going going for a trip away? Give space for him to book the restaurants, do the book the flights, all this kind of stuff. You know, I mean, if I can see where this conversation is going to lead on to. It's going to lead on to splitting the bill and all this kind of stuff. Well, <laughs> well I'm sure you can guess, like, it, that's mm. a masculine trait. Let him take care of it. Mm. We need to stop treading on each other's toes. And the whole feminist chat. Yeah, like, there's extremes in everything. Mm. I'm not an extreme, and I'm aware of what the things are, but hopefully for this conversation, it sort of colours in the areas of... The confusion mm -hmm. that's going on out there. And what about a man? If we were to think about the feminine energy, mm. is that an example? Well, if a man is very sort of passive, right? Um, he lacks assertiveness. You know, to simplify, it's you know the masculine is about giving and the feminine is about receiving. So, if you're not working into that, then it's going to show. The woman's going to find some, somewhere else where she's going to get that. Makes sense. You mentioned that you obviously work a lot with men, and once in a while you will have the smart ass woman <laughs> well, trying to get in touch to know about the inside. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you can share some of those here today. Mm -hmm. Men in general, 
And maybe going back to one of the statistics that Chris Williamson actually mentioned, and I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't verified it, but I do want to hear it from you maybe. He said that, and it could be a dated stat, I'd, I'd caveat that, but he said that 50% of men do not want interactions with women as of today. Interaction as in do not even want to date, do not forget about a relationship, but do not even want to date. Does that sound surprising to you? I don't know about the validity of that uh, mm-hmm. statistic. But more the, um, the observation, does that surprise you? Why do we think there are people with with those reservations out there? Because of everything that we're on the back end of. Mm. The Me Too campaign, which was great awareness campaign. There were things that needed to be discussed. Off the back of that, it's left a lot of men fearful of a consequence that might be attached to speaking to someone they might like in public. And it's been very discouraging for men. When we see in the headlines that women in the gym are claiming that a guy is looking at them with these yoga pants on that are fantastically shaped around her backside, you know, that's probably provocative gym wear, you know, the society with women's crazy. You know, it doesn't help. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've got a lot of great female friends that, you know, they're, they're very attractive. And I speak to her about these on on these subjects. You know, what do you think? Tell us, Johnny. <laughs> We're frustrated. We're frustrated because men aren't making the move. It's, it's frustrating out there. Mm-hmm. So I guess all the more to people like me and, and all the other coaches out there that are helping men sort of get over these limited beliefs and empowering them in all the ways they are because we're actually doing a woman in the favor you know it's tough like in in the conversations about oh what do we do about enhancing our online profile like how about get off it get off it yeah really yeah. and what try to meet someone in real life yeah like that old thing <laughs> that old thing like that old taboo you know how about we be a bit more receptive and inviting of of new experience on a day to day how about we come to realize we have the opportunity to meet someone as soon as we leave our house what are we doing with our eyes where are we positioning ourselves in our lunch break you go into the canteen or you position yourself at that coffee shop where you know those handsome men hang out on their so lunch that's actually strategic of course it's strategic we all have the same time what are you doing with your time i don't care about giving advice about online it's a par I will give advice, but I will discourage people from seeing that as the only path. Because what it's really about is living a more enriching social life. And if it doesn't work out of one person, guess what? You've got a really healthy community underneath you. And you've got that social support, that nourishment Mm -hmm. that probably doesn't exist because you've abandoned it to go and accelerate at a great rate in your career. You know, it's like a lot of my clients, like they've achieved great things in their career, but it's kind of a sacrifice their social and their daily life. So you need to set the, you need to create a foundation. Get a social life underneath you. And you know what? The people you meet through friends, they're going to be more accountable. And they're going to treat you better. There's also familiarity. There's a sense of familiarity, I'd, I'd think. Yeah, we're also letting someone else down if they mess up with you, right? Because it, you're in that whole circle. There's no consequence attached to it not working out. How do you put yourself in situations where you meet people in real life? And I know the question might sound simplistic because you just put yourself out there Mm. and you go up to people and speak to them. But we think about London as a city in comparison to New York. I feel London is generally quite prudent as a city. You go to New York, I remember when I was there years back, people will walk up to you at the bar and strike a chat in London. And maybe that's my experience in friends, in friends, but it does feel like London, in London, we're quite polite, we're quite prude. How do you put yourself in those situations to meet someone in real life? Well, first of all, you've got to prime your mind for it, okay? A lot of the time, we're walking around every day with the argument we just had with our friend or our boss or that deadline we didn't meet and we're, we're punishing ourselves. So if we're thinking that, we're projecting it, Right? So we've got to change what we're thinking. We've got to change the conversation we're having with ourselves. I start my day and my clients start their day with, today we're going to fuck with people. <laughs> I can't fuck around. I'm going to blade it. <laughs> right? I'm going to see what I can get away with. Right? And then you've got to start to think, well, how does my body fend of that for? 
Why does my day fall at that thought? It might be that I see, I've caught eye contact with someone across the street or on a tube or however I commute to work. I just start playing with people. I'm throwing them a signal. Is it or is it? I don't know. Let's have, you know, just throw them something. Is it, is it coming back? Oh, it is. Is it? What's going on here? Then give it a wave. You know, they get a wave back. Say hello. They start a conversation. You're at a coffee shop. Ask for a charger. Ask for the wife. Mm-hmm. Put a silly name on your, on your cup. Get everyone to shout it out. Get everyone laughing. And then speak to anyone you want. Like, Every day we have this opportunity. It's we just need to be start feeling creatively about it. Ask for directions. Ask someone for the time. You know? This is give someone a cheeky smile. Take a risk. Because the real risk is not risking. What's the worst that could happen? You don't take the risk. Like if you if you're serious about bringing people into your life, you've got to get playful. A lot of people with a feeling urgency. And this stress of finding someone. And it's starting from that place. No. That's why it's not working out. Because you that energy is leaking out of you. You know? Let's let's not forget what this is about. It's about having fun, being playful, being a good person to be around. I'm picking up that phone and calling that person because I want to spend more time with them. I want that energy. Every day can start from that place. I mean, anyone watching this, just, just start thinking like that. Start your day t- the next day and then just see... T- Write a comment <laughs> on how you go on. Like, yeah, do it. Love this. Like, every, a lot of conversations can start without even opening your mouth. You know, you talk about nonverbal communication, and I talk about eye contact. When you get eye contact back, the conversation's already started. Let's go. You don't need to over. What do I say? Just hey. Mm. Yeah, people overcomplicating what's next. Just hey. My um, a friend of mine actually signed up to a session with a dating coach um, two years ago. Um, I think he's still single, but he, he told me about his session because then his sister signed up to that. And then, um, the dating coach, um, actually told them, now that you mentioned it, it, it reminded me that when you're on the tube, as that, that was one of the examples she probably gave them, have a book with you. It's kind of a prompt, maybe for a conversation if someone is sat next to you, or if someone else is reading a book, be like, what book are you reading? And then she did say, Try to, if you're invited at a friend's, you know, a friend's brunch or dinner, try to get to a restaurant 20 minutes, half an hour before and don't be on your phone. Look around the room, try yeah. to make eye contact. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, that's where it starts. Uh, another one, a friend used to uh, share this with one of uh, the, the client today. And, uh, you know, we were looking at the struggle, like, let, not a lot of men would approach a group of women, which is, which is wrong, by the way. I think, like, everyone, any guy watching this, just need to understand that it's very rare you have a girl that's out on her own. Like, you need to learn how to approach group of women. Like, women go out, they have dinners, they, you know, they go out together. Like, mm-hmm. it needs to be learned. For, for the women, like, they can be let down by another member of the group, right? You might have a female friend who just loves the sound of her own voice. And a guy might come over and you're like, oh, cool, I might meet a guy tonight, right? But then your friend that loves the sound of her voice barks in, woof, 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 you know, for look at me campaign. <laughs> And just ruins it for everyone. But you're thinking, oh, I thought the guy was cute. Mm. I messed it up for everyone, you know? And you still go out of this girl. Like, she's not a team player. Um, so in those situations, it's like, well, how do you resolve it? Well, the bigger picture is, you know, you pick a better team. But at, you might want to splinter away from the the table, at some point, to go to the bathroom. Or you, you left your phone in there. Or you left something in there. So you go back in there. And you make yourself available so the guy that's been giving you the eye contact all night can take a clean shot. You know, it's like leaving the hanky on the floor. That kind of thing, you know. You gotta. We just need to give each other a starting point. But some people are getting in the way of it. I can tell you've been thinking about this and sharing those examples with people, and love it for people listening to us. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we're on a game of getting people healthier dating lives. You know. Do you think it's a brilliant game? At the beginning. You need to build up your confidence. And, you know, what, what are we talking about voting game? Are we talking about sleeping with many people as possible? Are we talking about interacting, dating? What are we talking about here? Because I, from my experience, you know, I wasn't good at this. This was something that I had to get good at. And how I got good was volume. Because what came with the volume is a data sample. Mm. And I could start to see, oh, well, you know, communicating like this doesn't work like you, you you can't pierce through you can't make impact 
if you got out and you've interacted with so a hundred people, a thousand people, ten thousand people, hundred thousand people, can you imagine how many interactions you've had? Like you're only going to make it more interesting for yourself the next interaction you have, which means you are so far ahead of anyone that is going to do it for maybe like the third time or the yeah. fourth time. Um, and with that becomes a really unique, fun experience for the person that you're talking to. So I think absolutely, yes, volume comes from going out and experiencing more social situations. What do we know about each other? We like to see that someone's confident. So where does confidence comes from? It comes from repetition. So yes, you need to you need volume to get good and confident in the social place. Let's get deep here. In finding a connection, is that still a volume game? I think it's an understanding of how to, you know, it's a map and how you get there. I believe you can have chemistry of anyone. Like anyone. 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 If you know how to get there, right? We all have things we can relate to. There's the superficial things that one can relate to, but underneath all that is the feelings that that you obtain whilst maybe doing those superficial things, right? We all have feelings that are relatable. So with the right sort of strategy and conversation, you can get to there and you can have a real meaningful interaction with someone mm-hmm. that you probably haven't had with many people. So you want to see that person again and again and again because it becomes very special. Well, I can teach that, but what you can't teach is compatibility. And that's completely subjective as to where someone is in the chapters of their life. It might be that you've engaged and decided you want to have a um, uh, an overseas relationship. Perhaps that's something that you know you may have experienced. My experience doesn't really work. Like a long distance relationship. Yeah, it doesn't really work. We get to a, it gets to a, gets to a point where it's got a, it's a fork in the road. Are we going this way or that way? It's very poetic and romantic, mm. the idea of it. But actually, what's the practicality of it? You know. It's, it's, a, it's very feel good. The feelings are amplified every time we see each other. Mm. But are we going this way or that way? That conversation needs to happen. If we're both not on the same page, when there's compatibility of history, it's definitely not a chemistry issue. Chemistry is like all over the show. It's a compatibility issue. It was selfish for me to ask you to go this way because you're you're doing that in your world here, and I don't see a thing for me in that in in that direction. So you know, it's compatibility. Mm. You know, it might be a family planning situation. You know, you don't want, your values aren't aligned there. It's a compatibility issue. When you speak to men in general, other than trying to be more confident in how to strike a conversation with someone in real life and, and all the stuff around it, do you sense that increasingly there are less men who want to be in a relationship? For instance, do you, and maybe that brings us to the next part of this conversation. Do men in general want marriage? Yeah, men do want marriage. Um, look, there's a huge misconception like over the years when you know, when you're a men's coach, you work in predominantly with men. The easy thing to slander someone's name is, oh, you're just teaching guys to get laid, right? It's part of it. It's part of any sort of human, any from human sort of um, collection at that level. It's not the focus, you know, because you have to build chemistry in order for someone to run across the line in that respect I ask my clients what is it you're looking for not one of them goes I want to get laid like that's what I'm here for they all say I'm looking for companionship and someone who is in alignment with my values those are the people I'm dealing with like these are these are real genuine people that want to work on themselves and become the best version of themselves for the beginning they want to meet in their lives it's a beautiful thing. And and the, what you see these guys do and experience that who they become is extraordinary. But the hardest thing is actually getting them to believe and trust that, that someone can help them in that area. That's the most exhausting thing. But once you've got it going, wow, it's incredible. And what are men looking for in general in women? So she won last time I actually said this when we were laughing about this. She said, um, and it was actually interesting because it got a lot of people talking but you say that the women are generally looking for the first six in men, six packs, six figures, and six foot. And then she said that men are looking for the three Fs in women, which, it, which if, if I can still remember, being a bit feminine and friendly. <laughs> so let me ask you, what are men looking for in, in women? In a yeah, good I, 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 I think so. I mean, who wouldn't want that? You know, what, what's wrong but with is that? Is there anything else that from your conversation with clients that 
maybe stands out that we haven't thought of or we haven't touched on? The most important thing that a man is looking for a woman is a woman that can push back. Okay? That doesn't mean being abrasive all the time and being an ag. It just means that you hang on your boundaries and you're not afraid to speak up to you, for yourself. Right? Because you've got to figure out what's the consequence of not doing that. Right? The consequence of not doing is that you, it actually leads to an abusive relationship. Because the abuse starts by one pushing over the other's boundaries and then they go further and further and further. Okay? Until, God forbid, it gets physical. Mm. Which, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've seen that happen. Right? Mm. And I've, I've worked with people that have been in a repeated cycle of that. Right? And a lot of it is to do with attaching fear to the confrontation because they fear they actually lose the relationship. Mm. They lose the relationship by not having a voice. Because what happens if you lose respect, you lose attraction. So you have to have a voice. There's some things you let go. There are things that you let go. But if there's something that is a hard no for you, you've got to stand up for yourself. So it's the, it, we call it the challenge. We challenge. We challenge each other when we, we're moving closer to the line. We're getting a bit too comfortable, perhaps. That might be another thing. We're getting a bit too comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're starting to become a domesticated house cat. You were a tiger when I met you. Now you're a domesticated house cat. What's going on? Let's not lose attraction for each other here. Yeah. Right. Let's get back to the... That you being the masculine man, leading, planning, making an effort, having things in the diary for us to do. Let's not forget about the importance of that. Just because you've got me now doesn't mean you can sit back and put on the Netflix every night. Yeah. Let's put down our phones. Let's think about that human connection. Let's hold this eye contact. Let's talk. Men are generally, and it's scientifically proven that men are generally less open versus women. Women can be more open communicators. True. When we think about online dating, and it's just because now modern dating, online dating is a big part of modern dating, it's one already hard judging someone by their profile, like a few worded profile on whether that's Bumble, Hinge, whether the dating app we could be talking about. The interactions can be trickier as well. The question, I guess, here is, how do you tell men in general to open up and talk about their feelings and their emotions? We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Yeah, we're, you know, it's, it's, uh, I was speaking about this with my girlfriend the other, other night, and it's still confusing for men because... What is? The open up, because when they're, they're confusing it with, when you're showing weakness... Right? That's emasculating. So if I'm showing weakness to my girlfriend, right, and I, I notice that there's some attraction that she's losing because I'm showing that weakness, then what do I learn from that? You shut up. Yeah, I, okay, I'm just, you know, I do the certain things I just got to deal with silently. And there's a lot of men that struggle silently. They struggle silently about their financial position, their career. Mm hmm. Their emotions, and that's the that's the that's a struggle we don't often talk about. You know, there's things like the Heads Together campaign that came out, and you know, encourage such things, and you know, the support for men to talk about their emotions. But we're just not there yet. You know, I I definitely help men communicate more openly, ask certain questions, set the frame of from the beginning of their relationships to not have any fear attached to speaking about each other's wants, needs, desires, fantasies, things they want to do, things they want to explore, you know, to whatever capacity. Because if you start from that place, then there's never going to be fear of introducing that conversation later on down the line. And when it comes to online dating more precisely, do you have any practical tips to ensure better matches because apparently men get less swipes than women but what we know about online dating is it only really works for a small percentage of people yeah i've i've got examples of people that have found love on there and have got married mm-hmm. fantastic you know in actual fact i just visited my friend in valencia over the weekend and um 
she met her partner on Hinge. You know, she's got a baby. She had two months ago, two weeks ago, she was saying. She's happily married. So there's a success story. But if you're experiencing frustration through it, a lot of it is to do with how you're branding yourself, the marketing behind your approach. Because you think about it, we are a brand. This dating thing is a marketing game. Mm. So let's start there. Let's start, I think, when you're choosing the six images, you traditionally choose six images on these online platforms. Think of it on a website. If you're on a, you know, if the internet marketers watching this, this would probably resonate more with them. It's important to have a good landing page. Because if the landing page just doesn't grab your attention, you know what? You're going to click off. I was working with a client today. Her landing page was a, a picture of her in, in the Alps with big goggles and that. No, well, you're not. Well, I can't even see you. That's your first Sounds list. adventurous, but you sure. probably can't see her. But we can choose better imagery to communicate that message, hmm. but that side of ourselves. So your images should not be <laughs> captured off like an iPhone 6. <laughs> you know, like the... the the image quality needs to be high. Mm. It's you don't want to see all your friends in the photos. I don't care about your friends. <laughs> I'm, you know, I don't get if I'm in the shop and I'm shopping for Hermes, I don't want to see Nike. <laughs> I'm not here to see the Nike. I'm here to see Hermes. It's that over there. It's that then. Well, don't pick hotter friends in your pictures if you're doing them as well, because that's obviously I'm going to get like it's like having a sales page and you've got some distraction at the end. Mm-hmm. Like. It's, <laughs> You've got to get that part of stuff sorted out, first of all, right? The image, and a lot of it, if you don't look good in your images, mm. get that sorted out. Why don't you look good? You know, but, you know but what's the truth? What's the truth? We don't look good because what? Because we don't know how to dress properly, you know? Maybe the, I've had to pull a client today and the clothes she's wearing, she's in for this image, they're not flattering her. Mm. Like, never when you figure, it's just, the choice of clothing you're wearing for this image is doing nothing for you. You're losing out on a bit of real estate on this place here to capture someone's attention. You've lost it. So these are things that matter. Instagram matters. Why am I not on Instagram? You know, there's people who's not on Instagram. Why am I not on Instagram? I am on Instagram, but is it a big thing in general when it comes to dating? Is that... Is that... Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that one's... Like... like... <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Instagram is the real online dating. Are you joking? You can message anyone without any barrier. There's no swipe to you know, make sure. Like, you can message them straight away. You can, you can show that you're interested. You can have a peek by appearing in their stories. You can see who's following your stories. What might not have been something right there and then IRL in real life, but you're still following each other on Instagram. Six months later might be an opening for you. It's a crazy to I can't think on one account in the last decade where Instagram hasn't played a part in my romantic life I I can almost take the words out of their mouth when I ask my clients are you on Instagram no of course they're not we we have like part of it is because of that like where's everyone's attention it's there right and and there's more hooks to play with there's Mm -hmm. more like there's more there's more parts of herself we can reveal to uh, uh, these up now into the six pictures you know, we can get a huge snapshot of where someone is and how they measure up, uh, if our values and alignment in certain mm. areas. Guys, just forget the online apps, man. Tell you, forget them. Just focus on Instagram. Take your account off private and just start marketing yourself. <laughs> it's marketing. What, 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 how are you marketing to with a private account? <laughs> like, what's a, how, how is your, like, you have the ability to appear on the social graph like never before. You have a not on there. Or it's private. So how is someone going to learn about you? There's so much strategy that you can use with Facebook or Instagram to make you appear on other social graphs. You can target the exact person you want. I'm telling you, I've, I've done it in my personal lab and I've helped clients do the same thing. Johnny, this is going to make the clip. Of, uh, this is going to be the clip of the podcast. <laughs> I think I'm, 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 I'm laughing because, I mean... It's a different conversation about the creepy DMs that you receive, but you you did hit big point, and I think, yeah, we never. I mean, I don't know. I'm probably old school, but I never thought of it that way. And yeah, of course, mm. it's um, and it's so much fun stuff you can do with it. Like it just, it's funny. It's fun. Mm. I mean, like if you look at your stories, for example, 
Well, it's, it's in, if you know about email marketing and you're using an email marketing platform to your database, you can see who's opened up your emails. When Instagram introduced stories, <laughs> they basically put that idea on there so we can see who are being in traction with slowly, slowly. It's ridiculous. Whether it, with your business, right, and you've got a message to speak about, you're talking about your product, or you're slowly seducing your audience, you can see who your watchers are. Or you're just posting some images of you doing funny stuff. Mm-hmm. Like with the girls or in your trip, you can see that dude checking it. Can this also be a call for people to say more than beyond, hey, and I tell you what, well, I thought it was just guys who would go up to women being like, hey, because I've heard of girlfriends who would say, well, guys these days, they just message everyone, we're like, hey, like, what am I meant to do with this? But then one friend actually told me, like, the number of girls he would get messages from, like, basically match with them and saying, hey, even to him, no matter how much of a catch there would be he would just go oh another hey what what am i meant to do with this sorry so he has a lot of status online and he was using hey he would be receiving the hey's from the girls from girls which brings me to even women and girls actually go hey and nothing more to men expecting that men should be the one pursuing the chat a lot of it comes from like anxiousness too you know like revealing like investing too much too early oh what if i say like, he's got a really cute dog and like, i get mm. a desert message back well at least i've only just said hey you know like well, what would you expect like if you invest a little bit more then you get something back so take the effort i mean <laughs> this should just be common sense really like look at the images see what's relatable see what you're curious about and approach it from that place. Like, be curious about what's going on in that image. Like, why do you think they... You, why has he put that image there? There's a talking point. Why have you put certain images on your profile? Because there's a talking point. Yeah. So go for it. Guys, don't be blatantly just commenting on the hot one in your bikini. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, that, that that's just... <laughs> Yeah, comment on the dog or something. You know, comment on the dog. Or... Comment on the dog before the bikini. Right. Okay. Oh uh, well, no. I mean, uh, it's it's a trap, you know. Like every guy's doing that. So, I think when it comes to if a woman's very attractive, you know, you you want to compliment her more so on her ideas, her thoughts, her achievements, as opposed to her beauty. You know that, of course, there'll be time to to compliment on that. But that's not really going to penetrate, so to speak, <laughs> at mm-hmm. the beginning. You know, it, you. you you got to be unique with your approach. I have, I heard this um, somewhere that apparently it's very common for guys to use two truths and a lie. Mm. Do you know about this one? Yeah. Dating apps, right? I mean, you should, you're the dating coach, mm. what am I saying? But it was advised, it was, it's advisable to women to actually have the same form, which is apparently not a common one for women because it does spark conversations. Yeah. It just makes it easier. It's yeah. a bit playful. Yeah, the problems aren't off the top of my head right now of like what you can choose, but you can get really creative with them. Mm. Yeah, you, you, you really can. And try to not be too serious with it. Like always try to inject humor around it. Remember, rule number one, it's got to be playful. It's got to be playful. You've got to have fun with this. You know, yes, there might be some urgency. You feel there's more urgency towards it, but people can feel urgency. So start with playfulness, always from your approach. The reality is that online dating were brought about to facilitate dating. And yet we are in the situation where there are more single people and we can go on for ages about independent women, men having insecurities, what else not. If you've been consciously dating and you're still struggling. Well, how conscious are we talking here? You know, I mean, what, just because... A date a week? Is that sort of strategic... I don't know. Where are they coming from? Mm. What I'm asking. Because I can waste a whole day on the phone with prospects that I could potentially work with. They just might not be financially qualified. Mm. Where are the needs coming from? Where are they coming from? Is it a waste of time to begin with? Like, th- this is what I'm saying. Like, when I'm talking about strategy, I'm talking about where you position yourself. You know, I had a funny conversation with my client earlier. I was like, you know, I hate the pub culture. I hate going out drinking, talking crap, 
with, with a bunch of the guys that are escaping whatever they're escaping, like stuff that but then later on in life I changed my opinion on that I was like actually the pub in the right neighborhood is a different experience you know so what places are you going to week in week out speaking to the same people week in week out expecting a different outcome that needs to be looked at it needs to be changed to be in real alignment with the demographic the archetype of the person that you want to go for that's conscious dating. Not getting a thumbs up <laughs> on the apps going, oh, well, you know, he looks good. And people like, oh, you've got to, you've got to really understand what it is you're looking for. You've got to know how to ask the right questions. You've got to know how to elicit these values. You've got to know how to observe when someone's behaving in certain ways that matches the character traits that you've made yourself aware of. And you've got to go that direction. Like, that, for me, is conscious dating. It starts with, you know, like any business, again, in the marketing game, what, if you're a successful marketer, what do you do? You work out who your target audience is. Okay, my target audience is this. That's the person. Okay, well, where do I position myself? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I've got a shop on Oxford Street. Well, what kind the, the, you need to be on you know, Bond Street, right? It's... You've got to be thinking like that. You might be just positioning yourself in the wrong places. That's the biggest takeaway today. That's the biggest homework is do an audit of where you're going, who you're spending your time with, what you're doing, and ask yourself, is this in alignment with the people that I want to meet? That's conscious data. And we've talked about what men look for, are looking for in a woman. So my female audience listening to this and I think if I look at the age breakdown of people, uh, of, of the female uh, audience, it's pretty much like in the late 20s, early 30s and onwards. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for the right man, as in marriage or not, which is a different conversation altogether, the family man, the one who would be the father to your children, thinking about dating, and we were talking about conscious dating, thinking about dating with that mindset, what are some of the things you should be asking a guy on the first or the second date? What are some of the strategic things that, well, maybe strategic is not the word, but you do have a certain, you do go in into the dating scene with a sort of imaginary tick box mm -hmm. and you'll go, yes, he wants kids, he wants marriage. What are some of the questions you're meant to know on date one, date two? Well, what are the questions that are important to you to find the answers of, right? But do you ask them right away or do you rather go, well, he seems a bit uncertain. I don't want to scare him away. I'd rather keep those questions for date five, date six. Or do you think it's better to ask right up front? Well, I mean, it depends on the heaviness of it. You know, um, you don't necessarily need to know what someone's biggest trauma is. And you what? Know? <laughs> you know? Unless he rings it up. <laughs> yeah, I just picks things up a bit. You know, what crazy are you? But it was one of five. <laughs> How, what were your exes like? <laughs> um, I think we have to acknowledge what someone is is not comfortable with sharing at some point um doesn't mean you never get the answers to those questions it just means mm -hmm. at that moment in time they're not comfortable with sharing um but if they're important to you it's you're going to need the answers because that's going to be the fabric of your future right so we don't need to complicate this it's I have an exercise with my clients and make them write a list of the qualities that they're looking for within someone, right? Let's say it is fa fa family planning, you know. I only look for, a, I'm looking to build a family. If, if Should I find the right person? Um, what about you? Where are you running at in the chapter of your life? That's a healthy conversation. There should be no weight really attached to that. I mean, what's wrong with that? You know, you're literally just, that's cool. It just so to simplify, like whatever the thing is mm. that you will elicit, that information will elicit. It's, I like this. Are you this? And you can language that up and speak in metaphors, riddles and rhymes, whatever <laughs> way you want. Right. But you're effectively using that metal just to ask. You know, you might talk about a, you know, like for me, and there's nothing I I quite like to do than, you know, to get away and explore a new city. Like, God. I, 
you know, adventure is so important to me. Like, mm-hmm. he's only, what about you? You've made yourself aware that's something that you like. You like the sense of adventurism and um, novelty uh, within your relationship. So you're designing a question to be asked to see how he responds to it. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's fun as well. Like, you make it more interesting for yourself. Especially if you're going a thousand a day, <laughs> <laughs> which you shouldn't be, by the way. If you're, yeah, if you're, if you're doing this in precision, like if, if you, if you're doing this in the right way, you're doing thousands of dates. It's just, you know, you, you can really bring those numbers down. Unfair question, maybe. What about those dates, good dates, where you, it eventually goes on for three, four months, three, four months. The guy doesn't know whether he wants, whether he wants kids, whether he wants kids or not. But he's kind of ready to, he's kind of ready to explore this with you, fun dating and so on. For the girl, it's quite important for her to find out, right? Because this is this. There needs to be some sort of security thinking about the future. Do you still go on for those four or five dates in general? Have you seen it? Because there's a risk that it does fiddle out eventually in the future. I mean, all relationships end, or well, they 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 complete, or however you want to say it, right? They conclude. <laughs> It's true. Mm. Whether it's, it's deaf or it's whatever, um, I think the thing to look out for is signs of commitment. There's different levels of commitment. You know, talk about having a commitment ladder, mm. and an early commitment might be them introducing them to your friends. It might be them planning a trip with you. It might be introducing you to their parents, and so forth and so forth. Right, as long as he's climb, you know, you're you're seeing the steps up the commitment ladder, and he said that he he, you know, I mean, it, it's a difficult thing for a guy to say, like I want kids with you. He didn't know him yet. Agreed. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a lot of pressure for that question for a man to to answer. Mm-hmm. He's obviously going to be conscious of oh, not wasting your time too. That will be something on his mind, you know. So if he feels that. You know, a decent man, well, if he feels like yeah. you're not that person, then I feel that he'll bow out. And things are going to lead you on, you know, until it's time up for you. Because that's a coward. So any men that listen to this, that aren't doing that, you've been incredibly selfish. You know, I, I in, my, in my younger years, I went through a phase of dating older women, okay? And um, I became conscious of when I needed to back away because these women were getting older. And if they did express family stuff that they wanted, then that would be playing on my conscious a lot that I'm rubbing them of that opportunity. And I need to get out of that space for them to find someone that could provide that for them that is in alignment with their values. Remember, we said from the beginning, we said chemistry and compatibility. You know, if you know you're not compatible, I'm mean, sure, like, you, it's okay to have short term relationships. Like, they, they, mm-hmm. they meet and fulfill a need for both, both parts too. But recognize it as that, if, if it just is that, rather than keeping it going. It's tough. It's tough to break it away. It's, it's a horrible thing to break mm-hmm. up. But it's a horrible thing to know that you've rubbed someone. Of something, knowing that you're going to break up later on down the line anyway, because they're not fit for purpose for what you've got in mind. Last one, Johnny. We talked about women being in the PQs. There seems to be one. Mm. Generally, is there an age where you would say men, on average, this is where they reached the peak of maturity? Peak of maturity. Mm. Well, that's interesting because I've met many immature I mean, men. I was, but, I was going, uh, I was putting my Johnny's cap here, and I'm like, mm, I'm sure we would go. Well, they're different. They're immature men at different ages. But is there one in general? Is that is it like late thirty? Is it late forty? Is there an age where you feel like? Well, I think maturity comes with experience. I don't necessarily think it's to do with age. Mm. You know, I mean, genuinely speaking, we. we We'd like to think a man is more, more mature when he's coming to his 30s. He's made the mistakes. That's what I hear. Yes, he's, he's made the mistakes as a young man. Might have the time to do and, and, and possibly learn from them. 
um, and he's a bit more still in his thinking and his movements and his his choices, his decisions. But in terms of, I mean, there's there's you know there's a lot of information out there that backs this up. You know, it's just from an evolutionary standpoint, men are always going to be attracted towards that lower bracket. You know, and women, it's going to be it's going to be higher because the guy's seen as more stable. He's safe. He's secure. He's more resourceful. Um, let's stop punishing each other for that decision. Like, it's just evolutionary makes sense. That's in us. That's why we're drawn to those decisions. Um, the the beauty space I speak about finally. Um, for women, it helps prolong youth, right? And even more so now with the advancement of all these aesthetic treatments that are out there. And, and now also the option of freezing eggs, right? I think they get very caught up in feeling younger than they actually are. Then they're left with a little bit of time to make those family planning decisions. And of course, with the empowerment of women as well, you know, it's the idea of going after the career and becoming more independent, more resourceful. It's also pushing women to decide to have children if they choose to later on. But the consequence of that is the majority of men, the men of status, aren't necessarily going to pick those women based on the evolutionary theory that we've just spoken about. It's an interesting place where we're at in society and, and there's certain consciousness that needs to be around what's happened and consequence of his things. On this insightful note, Johnny, thank you very much for coming in today. It's really great to hear your perspective um, as a dating coach dealing with male clients, because I feel most of the time we hear the female perspective, and it's quite refreshing having your take on this on this topic. And for people who probably want to hear more about your work, I'll leave all the social links in the description. But thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you for providing the platform. And as I said, it needs to be more stuff like this, where where men in this position can speak on behalf of, of, of men, you know, from that perspective. There is certainly a lack of it. We'll bear that in mind. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you.